What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. A couple of days ago, we just got Battlefield 2042's last weapon and it's called DFR Strife. It was introduced previously, before Season 7 even goes live, but we knew that it will be delayed to a mid-season update, so we finally got hands on it along with the new bummer and all the nerfs in Update 7.2. If you want to know more about this update, I've already made a video on that and it will pop up on the top right corner. Make sure to check that out as well. And don't forget that your likes will really support the channel, so if you enjoy the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you all guys for doing that, and let's get straight to the point. DICE claims that the DFR Strife is a versatile LMG, and looking at the stats, it sure looks to be exactly that. You've got a fire rate of 770 RPM, which is a pretty competent number, even against some of the assault rifles. Most of the LMGs can't even get close to that number, and so it's got some advantages when it comes to close combat. Also, it's got the armor-piercing grenade launcher, which is just a menace in Battlefield 2042, and you can have a belt-fed magazine with 90 rounds, so looking at this weapon, it sure as hell looks like a weapon half assault rifle and half LMG. You've got the firepower of an LMG with almost the same suppressive advantage as any other LMG, but you have the mobility and versatility of an assault rifle. All in all, the DFR Strife is in fact a versatile weapon, but let's take a look at the attachments, because today, we're going to put together the best setup for this little boy. It's really a nice weapon even when it's completely stock and out of the box, but we can make it even better. So starting off with muzzle attachments, the recoil of this weapon looks to me like mostly horizontal. Ever since they've added the visual recoil, you can not tell the recoil pattern by just using the weapon, but standing in front of a wall and shooting that makes it obvious that most of the recoil is just horizontal and harder to control than the usual vertical recoil. Because of that, we've got the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Break for the first slot to get rid of that horizontal recoil as much as we can and have some easier time shooting this weapon in medium range. Next up for a second slot, I'd rather go with Wrapped Suppressor. Actually, there's a choice here for you. So you've got two heavy suppressors being the Type 4 and PB Heavy Suppressor. Personally, I don't like putting suppressors on my weapons in 2042, and if I have to choose one, I will definitely avoid using those heavy ones because of damage and TTK. That's why I go with Wrapped Suppressor for this one. But if you guys want to go completely off the radar with subsonic rounds and be absolutely invisible on the minimap, then I won't stop you so you can have a Heavy Suppressor as well. My personal preference here is the Type 4 Heavy Suppressor if I want to choose one, and with all the attachments in place, the weapon should look like this so far. Moving on to underbarrel attachments, for the first slot, which is the slot you want to use almost all the time, I'd go with MGL Laser Sight. This attachment, as I've mentioned a ton of times before, gives you everything you need in expense of literally nothing. There's really no downside to this attachment. You get more hipfire accuracy and better recoil control, but your laser beam will be visible, which you can get rid of if need be with just the press of a button. You can just turn that off in smoke or around the corners, so people just don't see you coming. Also, this weapon has a crazy fire rate for an LMG, and that means you can play relatively aggressive, and for those close quarters, nothing works better than a weapon with decent hipfire. All in all, I believe you should definitely stay with MGL Laser Sight, on this specific weapon. However, if you guys are like those accuracy nerds, you can absolutely go with the LWG grip instead of the MGL laser sight, and that is also going to work, but my personal preference is going to be the MGL laser sight here. For the second slot, I'd go with the ADR bipod since this weapon is an LMG after all. You might find yourself in a situation where you need to suppress, let's say, an enemy sniper, or your team just needs some suppressive fire for capturing an objective. In that case, this will work in your favor by removing a decent portion of that recoil and allowing you to put more bullets down range with decent accuracy. So there goes the second slot and for the last slot, think about nothing but the almighty armor piercing underbarrel grenade launcher. It's a perfect attachment for going against enemy armor, you can just do a gun run against them since it's a pretty fast attachment to use and deals a relatively high damage for the size and agility. You get two grenades each time, which can be replenished by ammo crates and generally speaking, if you are going to play let's say support and you don't have anything against enemy armor, this attachment can really come in handy. With all the other battle attachments in place, the weapon should look like this so far. Now moving on to the fun part, the magazines, I believe we've got an easier job here. For the DFR Strife, you get almost every ammo type possible from armor piercing to subsonic and because of that, you've got a variety of choices to make based on the previous attachments. Now there's a catch to this weapon's ammo types and we're gonna go through that based on a stats chart 
as you can see right here this was made by sorrow and the credit goes to him i'll put the link down in the description so you guys can go ahead and use that for your personal attachment choices now we're trying to compare standard issue and high power here standard issue is in green and high power is in red as you can see Using high power rounds gives you 975 meter per second muzzle velocity, which is just crazy. That's as much velocity as an SWS has with the high power ammo as a sniper rifle. That's just freaking unbelievable, man. You also get a lot of damage and you can actually kill people within 150 meters just using five bullets, which is again, crazy comparing that to the standard issue, which can only five shot people in under 75 meters. For comparison, you can see the SWS standard issue with extended barrel having the same 965 meters per second muzzle velocity as the DFR. The XR with factory barrel is slightly higher than that and sits around 975 meters per second. And even the XCE bar has a slower muzzle velocity of 845 meters per second. So if you guys think that losing 70 RPM of fire rate is worth all the benefits, just replace the standard issue with high power. However, my choice is going to be the high power ammo. As my first slot, the second slot should be the subsonic to match that heavy suppressor or wrap suppressor based on your own preferences. And lastly, the standard issue for the second slot should be a decent choice. If you guys want to just have the maximum fire rate possible and care about nothing else, replace the high power with the standard issue and you get all the 707 RPM out of this weapon. The subsonic rounds, as you can see in the chart, are also decent and I believe having them even instead of the standard issue could work out sometimes. But generally speaking, using the subsonic ammo with heavy suppressors or with a light suppressor is going to be a deal breaker. And it's going to be really a game changer for you in terms of uh, minimap visibility. And if you just want to be a hitman, nobody knows where you are. Just go ahead and use that combination as well. And finally, for the weapon sights, this really depends a lot on your playstyle. But to give you my own setup for this, I usually go with a red dot sight to be able to engage in close to medium range. And you can pick whatever red dot sight you feel comfortable with. You can even go for sights like 8R Holo if you like. But the red dot sights just give you more clarity. And because you've got a bipod here and we might engage in longer ranges as well, I would like to have some higher magnification scope on the weapon as well. And in this case, my favorite is going to be the Ghost Hybrid, which is really a neat scope. You can also adjust the magnification from 4 times to 1.5 times in case you need to lower the distance quickly. And this is going to be how things look like after all the attachments are in place. If I want to sum it up real quick for the DFR Strife, in terms of versatility, it really serves well. You get a lot of fire rate with a ridiculous 1000 meters per second muzzle velocity, making you the laser in gunfights even in longer ranges. With all that said, another weapon setup guide video comes to an end. I guess this will be the last weapon setup guide for 2042, since this weapon will be the last weapon that we will get, unless DICE decides to give us the rest of the portal weapons, and in that case, We'll be covering those as well. I don't think that's going to be a really hard job for DICE to do. And I just don't know why they're avoiding doing that. Can't they just really give us the freaking portal guns? I do believe that's a ridiculous excuse for them not doing what they should do. Because we all know that 2042 lacks content even though it received all its content. So thank you all guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time guys, stay cool.